Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Pro and HD video discussion for the third day of August 2015. Hope you're doing well this Monday afternoon. Let's start off looking at the upper ocean heat content. This is a very important map that tells us how the ocean is doing beyond just the surface. Upper ocean heat content measures the amount of energy below the surface, that warm water layer. It's not just at the skin of the ocean, so to speak, but does it extend several dozen or perhaps several hundred meters deep. And when it does, you have high values at the upper end of the scale here of what we call TCHP, if I can outline it there, tropical cyclone heat potential. And really anything from here on up starts to get interesting, so to speak, providing additional energy for tropical storms and hurricanes as they come along and churn up the ocean, they're just churning up more warm water. So as you notice, all of the western and southwest Atlantic, Caribbean, and Gulf here are encompassed by fairly substantial upper ocean heat content values. What's lacking in the good news department here is any hurricanes to take advantage of that. Will that hold through August, September, and October? These next 90 days certainly will define the season. Uh, we'll have to wait and see about that. And you notice there's even a few uh, values showing up out here at the low end of the scale, uh, way out in the eastern Atlantic, where there may be some development in the coming days. So let's look at the National Hurricane Center site for guidance here. 95L sitting over the Florida-Georgia border. Uh, let's take a look at a satellite animation of that system. Really not going to develop into anything more than it is. It's a fairly small low pressure area and it's fairly weak in nature here. There it is right there. So it doesn't have that much energy associated with it. It's not very robust to begin with. 10, 10 millibars, 10, 11 millibars is about the lowest that I could see associated with it. And it simply just doesn't have the vigor that you would look for in a potential system that could develop. Now what it has done, the low, and there's thunder outside my office now uh, as I start to speak of that, the low pressure area and the associated, um, let me back out to a different satellite picture, you can see this better, sort of a convergent zone from the stalled front draped across the southeast here down to where the low is over the uh, Florida-Georgia border. This has acted as a focusing mechanism and we're getting some pretty decent showers and thunderstorms training over the same areas here, southeast North Carolina, northeast South Carolina, but also down in Florida, the Tampa area, really been hit hard over the last few days by heavy rainfall as this stalled front again a focusing mechanism for all that moisture and energy that's sitting out there over that very warm water you have high dew points a lot of precipitable water in the atmosphere and this front has come in and done a very efficient job of kind of wringing all that moisture out unfortunately a lot of it over the tampa bay area where right now at least as i'm recording this update there's a little bit of a dry spell going on, thank goodness, but it's been a rough few days down there for sure. Um, so going back to the National Hurricane Center site, let's take a look out now at the Central Pacific where Tropical Storm almost said Hurricane Guillermo is continuing its trek towards Hawaii. Luckily, it has weakened down to Tropical Storm intensity, and also it looks like the track is going to take this system just to the north of the Hawaiian Island chains that's just the center of circulation. We know that the effects extend well away from the center. In this case, this is definitely good news because the worst of the weather should pass to the north of especially the big island of Hawaii here and the upper level winds coming out of the west and west-southwest across this system. I mean, you can clearly see you have this shear going on. As I paint that over the top, gives you an idea. That's what's really going to help Hawaii here because water temperatures are certainly warm enough for a hurricane to sustain itself out that way this season, kind of a departure from normal, but the upper level winds are coming out of the west and southwest across this system creating wind shear. I think I've got a satellite picture that shows that very well. I do. And so the low level center is down here, but the thunderstorm activity being blown away from that low level center and thus you don't have much chance for development. Now, out off the coast of Africa, really nothing going on at the moment. However, this tropical wave, pretty robust looking, forecast by the GFS to come off and try to develop somewhere in this vicinity, 
and water temperatures out this way right through here running a little bit above the long-term average a little bit cooler to the west of there there is a little bit of a Saharan air layer sitting out here you can even see that to some extent in this particular satellite image but the wave of low pressure down here fairly far to the south coming off the coast of Africa south of the Cape Verde Islands in a couple of days and the GFS makes no bones about this developing this is the 5,000 foot layer of the atmosphere there is the wave of low pressure coming off about this time tomorrow 48 hours out a little bit stronger as you can see now coming off there the yellow is indicating vorticity spin or energy in the atmosphere and then at 72 hours it has a round appearance to it there as it consolidates over those warm waters south of the Cape Verde Islands and then at 96 hours continuing to get stronger here just to the southwest of the Cape Verdes <clears throat> finally by day five fairly healthy looking system there to the west southwest of the Cape Verde Islands chugging its way off to the west if we look at the 500 millibar chart we're going up in the atmosphere remember the atmosphere has got layers in it I want to see does this reach up through the atmosphere and yes it does uh, a little bit it's not a very large system but there it is nonetheless and then finally another clue for me to see if the GFS is you know off its rocker or if it's you know, all right it might do something here we do have this anticyclonic flow or a little bit of an anticyclone sitting right over the top of this system with very light wind and so the wind is also fanning out you can follow these wind barbs in a clockwise direction we don't have wind coming across the deep tropics like this cutting the top off of it so maybe just maybe this little candidate right here will be our next named storm way out in the far eastern Atlantic over in the western Pacific we do have a very powerful typhoon it is headed towards Taiwan perhaps and mainland China check out this satellite animation of it it's just incredible a super typhoon so lore I think is how you say it and that is a category 5 if it was a hurricane typhoons and hurricanes are the same exact weather phenomenon they just have a different name because of which basin of the ocean they occur in and look at that round nature of the central dense overcast and the perfectly round eye very very cold cloud tops indicated by these gray colors in here reaching well into the atmosphere pushing up against the stratosphere that is a very powerful typhoon and going back to the bigger picture here interest in Taiwan uh, towards mainland China here this is sort of a broad stroke look at it something like that is the path that the various global models are indicating over the next several days and it's something that you can track in Hurricane Pro and HD global cyclones are covered so if you're interested in that and you know people in the area let them know they can keep up with this particular dangerous typhoon uh, in Hurricane Pro and HD one of the awesome benefits of those apps so take advantage of that all right well that's it for me for today I'll be back probably on Wednesday with an update on things especially that typhoon so let's just do that we'll say I'll have this update uh, another one on Wednesday we can also see if the GFS is right about development off of Africa kind of a uh, you know as the world turns kind of thing tune in Wednesday for the next chapter and how the tropics are progressing along until then have a great rest of your win uh, Wednesday right Monday afternoon and I'll talk to you again on Wednesday as the thunder rolls outside my office mark settle for hurricane track.com and of course for hurricane pro and hd i'll talk to you again in a couple of days